she'd never had a chance to be a hero before. It seemed like only yesterday that she'd been running for her life, hiding in the forest with the other children of the scholars. But then the sky had fallen, and she'd seen the glory of the Divine Sisterhood. She'd known she couldn't stay a child forever. So she'd run home to her mother, and that's when it had all gone wrong. Nana had learned quickly that if she wanted to survive, she had to keep her head down and her mouth shut. But if there was one thing that Nana Gray understood better than anything else, it was the value of words. The girl from the mine, the novice said, her voice high and angry, her hands still gripping Nana by the shoulders. The priestess stared at Nana for a moment before stepping aside to reveal another figure standing before her, a tall figure, broad-shouldered and dark-haired. You're back, Sister Tallow said, and her tone made it clear that she was as surprised by this as anyone. What did you expect? Nana spat out, struggling against the novice's grip. I've got nowhere else to go. Sister Tallow's eyes dropped to the bruises on Nana's cheek and throat, then returned to her gaze. Are you hurt? Do you want me to have the novices attend to that for you? Nana shook her head. I'll heal. She jerked her shoulder from the novice's grasp and looked away to hide the tears, threatening to spill from her eyes. So what happened? Sister Tallow asked, a question that seemed to ask a great deal, given that Nana could only shake her head again. We had to leave the mine. A came. Nana hated the way her voice wobbled on those last words, hated the sound of them. It felt as if she'd been crying since they left, though she'd hardly noticed. The dead? Sister Tallow asked, raising an eyebrow. All dead. Every last one of them. Nana shook her head. There must have been three or four hundred. She couldn't help but look back up to the edge of the pit, to the darkness beneath the rim of stone, to the bodies there, their blood soaking into the ground, staining the rock red. How did they die? Tallow asked. The ground shook, and it rained blood. That's what we think anyway. We can't see anything else. Not with our own eyes, anyway. Tallow glanced around at the surrounding sisters who had drawn closer as news spread of Nane's return. What do you know of this? She asked the room at large. A voice spoke from somewhere to Tallow's left. I saw a giant with a long sword, like a great cleaver, coming down from the hills. It struck the mine and cut the ground apart. The hills are full of monsters, a voice called out from the doorway. Sister Keck limped in, leaning heavily on the shoulder of Sister Apple who supported her right side as they came forward. Sister Apple, Sister Tallow asked, how many times have I told you not to let her come out here alone? Sister Apple looked abashed but not in the least ashamed. I was going to be here soon, and she insisted. I'm not sure how much longer I can do this. She insisted. Sister Tallow raised an eyebrow. Are you sure it was she who insisted? Apple. Apple shrugged. I wouldn't say so. It's hard to tell. Sometimes I think she's just a figment of my imagination. She pointed at Nane. This is the girl that's been making all the fuss. I wouldn't call it a fuss, Nana said. I'm sure she would, Apple replied. Sister Tallow turned her attention back to Nane. You don't remember any of this? Nana shook her head. Sister Tallow frowned and looked across the room at Sister Rose who was shaking her head. It's just not possible. The mine is supposed to be unassailable. Well, it's not, Kettle said, and we don't have time for this now. She glared at the two sisters beside her before turning back to face Tallow. They've already sent word to the Mother Superior and she's ordered an inquiry. You'll have to wait until it's concluded before we know more. It was your duty to know more, Kettle Tallow said. Kettle looked up at her superior with a kind of anger that Nana hadn't seen on Kettle before. That's right. Her eyes dropped to meet Tallow's and Nana could almost feel the heat of them as they locked together, staring at each other across the room. Nana took a step towards them and Tallow held up a hand to halt her in her tracks. I want to know more, Nana said. And so do you. Tallow nodded slowly, a slight smile tugging at the corner of her mouth. Go and find a quiet place, child. You've had a bad time and it's catching up with you. She raised her voice to address the room at large. She wore food and drinks into her chambers. Nana had thought that she had no place among the sisters after all that had happened, but it seemed that even here, at the edge of the world, they needed her. Nana looked back over her shoulder at the novice still holding her by the shoulders. You can let go now, she said. The woman hesitated for a moment before stepping away, allowing Nana to escape from the hall with a swish of black habit.